Thank you everybody for coming uh, to the gala this year. So the theme of the gala is um, nuts and bolts of running for public office. Um, with us, we have three people for public office. We have Dave Gallops. Uh, District 3. Yeah, District 3 for uh, Ripon City Councilor. Uh, we have Naomi Miller, who is the Ripon City Clerk. Yes. Okay. And we have Lisa Freiberg as the Fond du Lac County Clerk. Um, so they will be talking for a little bit, give a little bio. Uh, and at the end, if there is time, uh, we'll open it up for a little bit of a question and answer. So. I'm going to let Lisa start for the county, and then I'll take over. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I did bring I did bring some handouts if you want some. I know you can kind of just take a stack. Or... Jonathan, would you mind just handing these out? And I'll, I'll keep the show. Okay. I'll keep the show moving here. All right. So welcome everyone. It's great to see you. It's been a while since I've done a presentation like this. Actually, it's been since 2020, believe it or not. Um, and I'm not quite sure how we did that in 2020, so I'm not sure. Anyway, um, when I was updating my packet here, I realized it's been a while. So I am Lisa Freiberg, Fond du Lac County Clerk. Um, I've been with Fond du Lac County for 25 years this year. It was my 25 years of being with the county. I don't know where that quarter of a century went. It makes me feel even older. Um, been your county clerk, for anybody that's from Fond du Lac County, I have been your county clerk for 16 years now. Or this is my 16th year as being county clerk. And um, I get to run for office one more time next year for another four year term. So 2024 will be an interesting year. Let's just put it that way. Um, I'm hoping that if you're not interested for running for public office, maybe you know somebody that is. And we can use all kinds of new thoughts, ideas, everything else on any council, whether it be uh, uh, or elected position, whether it be your city, village or town, a school board, or even on the county level. Uh, this is a great opportunity for me to speak on this because in every county, uh, is everybody here from Fond du Lac County or do we have some other county people? Green Bay. Okay, great. So I'm gonna be, try to be broad on everything, but every county does have county board races coming up in spring here and coming up December 1st, we start circulating papers. So we, perfect timing that we are talking about this subject. Um, and same with school boards and everything else. So, you know, people look at running for public office, it's, oh my gosh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Are you kidding me? We gotta do all this. So let's think of it as applying for a job. So we'll talk about that. Your qualifications, you open up the newspaper for, a, for those of us that remember reading a newspaper, <laughs> although Rippin does have a pretty good newspaper. But you, you have to be, I actually can learn something in the ripping paper. Uh, be a U.S. citizen, 18, um, not a felon. Oh, okay, that's what the job description said. Um, okay, you gotta fill out some forms, and we'll go over those forms in just a little bit. Um, on the first page, I have some resources that can actually that will help you if you're running for public office. But the biggest thing when you're gonna run for public office is that you do research the position and educate yourself on what the position is actually going to be. When people take off out, uh, papers now in the next couple weeks or month for county board, I make sure they're gonna be educated, meaning they're gonna get the county board agenda, whether it's emailed to them or it's mailed to them. So as soon as they have an intent that they are going to run, the, new, the agenda will be sent to them. I'll ask them if there's any committees that they're interested in. They're going to get the agendas. They're going to get the minutes. I'm going to get them going right away so that when they start their first meeting, they're not sitting there going completely, well, I didn't know this was on the agenda. I didn't know this is what you talked about and all that other information. In today's world, I mean, literally every down to our municipalities have minutes and agendas out there. So you people should be educating themselves on what they're running for. Don't run for that one thing that I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna make sure they never have to wear a mask again or something like that or that they will have to wear a mask. We can go either way on that subject. And I don't wanna be political by any means tonight, but 
we saw that in the last couple of years. They have one agenda item only, and they're going to come in, and they're going to change the world. Um, attending me meetings, again, with Zoom these days, you can go in, you can watch them online, um, although I think you do a lot better when you are in person when you are on the board, but a lot of things are online. You can go back and watch them. On the county level, I know on the city level also, you can go back and watch it if you can't make a meeting to see what is going on. Read the minutes and psych yourself. I mean, be excited about it. Don't come walking in and say, I want to run for county board because I have nothing else to do today. I mean, go in there, go in. I want to run for city council. I want to run in this district. On the next page, on. Oh, how in the world did we go from one to three? Who has nothing else? Who has nothing else? Okay, all right. Well, he did. Yeah, okay, that gives us two back to back. That didn't happen so well, did it? Okay, um, page three then, we're going to do something different. Uh, spring election, that's coming up. I'm just giving you a real quick overview of what the elections look like in Wisconsin. And as I said on the radio this morning, because I got, I actually had a lady, quote unquote, tell me to go to hell on Wednesday because she, she called on Tuesday and insisted that there was an election. And we told her, no, there wasn't, ma'am. Went on and on. And then she called me yesterday and told me that her best friend got to vote in Wisconsin. And... Um, I explained and she finally just said, go to hell to me and hung up on me, so whatever. There was no election on Tuesday in Wisconsin. So we're going to look at 2024. And an even number year, we have lots of elections. Uh, spring elections, that's what we're going to quickly focus on. Uh, circulating and nomination papers start on December 1st. They go all the way to the first Tuesday in January, which will be January 2nd, 2024. Uh, always check with your filing officer. County level, that's myself. On your municipal level, that's going to be your municipal clerk, uh, Naomi, who will be speaking in just a uh, short few minutes. Uh, and then, of course, if you want to run for school district, you need to contact a school, uh, call the school, and ask who you would talk to. You guys can read on your own. I kind of gave you a little overview there on what could be on a spring election. Uh, school board elections, there's always an opening on every single school board every single year because of rotating terms. And then, of course, um, county elections that are only on the spring ballot would be county board supervisors and county executive because that's nonpartisan. I apologize for my handout. Uh, I should have checked with him one more time when he printed it. Uh, page five, state elections. Um, the nonpartisan elections, as all of you are very much educated in this room on how elections are run, so you know that it's a nonpartisan. Uh, the only time we see a partisan race on a spring election is presidential preference. But otherwise, in Wisconsin, all spring elections are nonpartisan races. And anytime you would see a state, it's going to be su superintendent of public instruction, justice of supreme. County, or um, yeah, Milwaukee, no, city of Milwaukee election per, uh, administrator. She was telling everybody that circulating starts May 1st and it's April 15th. So, those of you that are interested in the fair maps and everything, we are tick tocking away on the Supreme Court and having to come up with some type of decision because circulating of nomination papers begins April 15th and we have to know what the maps are going to look like prior to that, so we know who our legislative districts are going to be. Uh, they continue all the way to June 1st. Very short timeline when you're getting a lot of signatures. Uh, fall elections, once again, I just laid out on page five um, on what would be on a uh, fall election. Continuing to page seven, 
This is the ad in the paper now. This is when you're reading the paper, or you're seeing online that we have an election coming up on page seven, because this type A notice will be coming up in the uh, Ripon Commonwealth uh, on November 22nd, I believe the date is. It's gonna be, they're publishing the day before. So you're gonna open up your paper and you're gonna see, wow, Lisa Freiberg put this in the paper, just like she said she would. <laughs> and this is telling everybody there's an election coming up. But this is also like a help wanted because these positions are all open. We have a circuit court judge, but you do have to be an attorney or to be able to be judged. But look at all these county board seats we have. And starting like District 1, 2, 3 are all in the Ripon area for those of you that live in Fond du Lac County. Those are your representatives over here in Ripon. Um, Continuing on where it is back to back, actually, um, this is telling you what you need to provide to run to for this job offer. So that's all going to be in the paper. That's your wow. I want to run for county board or whatever race because Naomi's going to have that in there for the city. Uh, the school is going to have their help wanted in there. So that's your key to say okay or. My neighbor said they wanted to run, they don't get the paper, so I'm gonna run over there and say, hey, because there's nothing worse in January or February when I get that phone call that says, I am so upset with so-and-so on the county board, when can I take all papers? <laughs> yeah, that was a month ago, or six weeks ago. So if you, uh, if you really do know, you know, we can kiddingly say this, but if you really do know of somebody that was interested in running for a public office, you know, remind them, hey, the time is here. Um, going on to page nine once again, this is what your type A no notice is going to be look, going to look like in Fond du Lac County coming up for our fall elections. Um, who, it's always going to say who the current people are. You don't have to worry about that because you want that job, so you want to apply for that. Going on to page 11, we have a checklist. So I, this is telling you what you need to, to do to apply for that position. So we're just going to use county board on page 11. And you need to fill out a campaign registration statement, which I'll show you in just a little bit. Um, you have to submit nomination papers. That depends on the job or which um, position you are going for or which job you are applying for. We'll look at that in just a, a short moment. And then for county board, you have to get between 100 and 200 signatures. However, in Fond du Lac County, the statute that the county clerk found says that they could, by resolution, go down to 50 signatures. So that's no big deal. Um, submit a declaration of candidacy. We'll talk about those forms in just a little bit. So going on to, now back to odd pages. Um, I just put a sample uh, for school district on page 13. Uh, if you're looking forward to the fall elections next year and you want to run for county clerk for, by chance, uh, this is what you would need to do to run for that position. Lisa, yes. quick question. Because, well, I don't know if it's a question so much. I, I've had people you know, ask, oh, here, did you sign my, my nomination papers? That does not mean you're endorsing that person or correct. you have to vote for that person. That is correct. <laughs> That's a great question, and we'll come back to that in just a little bit to elaborate on that. It uh, looks like the next two pages got to be the same. I'm sorry. This is what you get for help these days. Um, page 19 is going to be for legislative. So we're going to go right up to page 21, and that is the declaration of candidacy. So this is your help wanted. This is you're going to fill this in for your filing clerk that you are running for whatever position. You put your address down. How do you want your name to be on the ballot? The person that, the filing clerk is gonna notarize it and they're gonna go on to the next page, which is page 23. You just have to fill out a little bit more paperwork, which when you're applying for a job, however you do that online, and you can do this online, but it's always good to do this in person so all your paperwork is filled out correctly. Um, just a little bit of information they'll ask of you on the next form. And then they'll, the filing clerk, for those that require nomination papers, will have, give you these papers to go around and get signatures. 
Great question. The people that sign this don't necessarily have to vote for you because you're not going to know if they voted for you however you want them to vote for you. And they're not, it's not any type of endorsement. So like for county boards, you got to get 50 signatures. You take six pieces of paper out and you go visit your neighbors and you talk about what's going on in your neighborhood and what you, those folks would like to see you be able to do representing them because you're now representing them. I also like to just say these are your references. You might have to get 60 references for the job, but nothing like, no, no different than when you are applying for a job and you've got to list three or four references, you might just have to do 60. Um, I know Naomi will explain how many is needed for city. I believe school is only 20. If I'm not mistaken, a lot of our towns and villages is only 20, but don't quote me on the school, but I think uh, like a cl uh, class one, like Fond du Lac School District, there are like 100 school uh, signatures. My final page I wanted to talk about is page 29. You went through everything, and now here is your interview. <laughs> the ballot. The ballot is your interview on if you are going to you know, get that job. So see, it's really simple. We were able to say, get through this like in 10 minutes um, as far as getting on. And that's how simple it can be. And you know what a difference you can make out there serving. So do you have any questions for me at this point? Otherwise, we'll let I have one question. Can yeah. you cite nomination papers for more than one person writing for the same office? No, unless it's a school. OK, let's just say like Griffin School is three. Uh, for three, you can sign three different people, but on three. So if there was five people running, you could sign on three. And that's, it's interesting because in some situations, we've already had people sign, let's just say two people were running for county board. We've had duplicate names. We've seen that a lot on the county level when we had opposition. Uh, for sheriff and everything, we'll get a lot of them, or not a lot, but we will see names on both sets because nobody wants to be, say no, you know, especially if they know both people. So nomination papers are gone through like in my office. Um, we actually, when there's people running against each other, I admit I'm not really good with Excel. I have staff that does that for me. So they'll do an Excel and then they can do any kind of searches. Because when you're taking, I got 25 county board supervisors. So I got at least 25 people coming in with nomination papers and then any kind of opposition. It is very, very time consuming in a very small office that I have. So would those uh, signatures then be just nullified and so should you have extras? Yes, always get extras, but what you do then on our end is whatever the early, the first date is the one that does count. Mm -hmm. So they sign yours and then they sign mine the next day by the date, yours, the one on yours will count, okay. but mine has to be eliminated. And we do see a lot of that. We see a lot of, if you're running for, make sure you're always in your own district. I know the city of Ripon is of the three cities in Fond du Lac County. They're the only, no, I'm sorry. Fond du Lac County, or city of Fond du Lac is a large city of Ripon and Waupon are by district. So I'm sure they go through. And I get so frustrated, I had a county board supervisor a couple of years ago and of course came in the day of the deadline, like at two o'clock, she went down the wrong side of the street. Oh. And I always tell my people, go in the middle of your area. We give them the map and everything. I know, but I know people over here. No, you need to get over here. So she was like literally running up and down the street to get enough signatures at that point. But I had a really good friend that did the same exact thing for North Fond du Lac. He went right down the wrong part of North Fond du Lac and didn't turn in his paperwork until four o'clock. And I had to call him the next day and say, you didn't make ballot status. So yeah, and you get me, because I, sorry, I, I raise my right hand to follow the law whether I like it sometimes. Yeah, I do my job, so. All right, if you have questions after, but we'll let Naomi go with hers. Okay.
Hello, I am Naomi Miller of the City Clerk in Ripon. Everybody here from Ripon? No. No? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. We'll forgive you. No. Okay. <laughs> um, I am uh, new to Ripon, so a lot of you may not actually know who I am. I've only been here about a year and a half, I think, now. Um, I am originally from Indiana. I was a clerk treasurer in Indiana for five years, and then... Um, ready for a change and a move, and I'll be honest with you, uh, I surprised, we're going to say, my husband and didn't tell him I put in for the job here. Um, and, uh, what do you mean? You're going to stay. You and, didn't. Yeah, I did not tell him. And I also didn't tell him I put in for a job in Alaska. So the short story is, I really, really love cold weather, and I really love snow, like, a lot. I love this stuff. And so... I was waiting on the two of them. Well, Adam happened to contact me about coming uh, to interview here. And so I got home and I said, okay, so we have choices. <laughs> should I wait for Alaska <laughs> or should we go to, go to Wisconsin? <laughs> so that's how I came about to be here and not in Alaska. Uh, I want to go to Alaska though someday. <laughs> uh, so I do have experience in being a clerk treasurer. Um, I was that, you know, like I said, for five years. But coming here and being the clerk in another state, things are done totally different. So it's wonderful because I have lots and lots of challenges. And one of the things that was handled on the county level was the elections. So it's absolutely been awesome learning and all the challenges involved in learning how to do elections and how everything is done in another state. So I have truly enjoyed uh, the challenge I've had. But with that being said, and I know we've been talking about the, uh, I want to call it a, a, a petition, but that was the references that Lisa was referring to. How hard is it to get the required references that you need? Yeah, it's not. So I don't know that I know enough people to get them. Yeah. I know I don't care. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know anyone either. I mean, I, obviously the accent, I'm a southern carpetbagger. I moved up here. <laughs> so, and then ran for office and hardly anyone in Ripon knew me and had, it's Ripple. Mm -hmm. So it, it's easy to get signatures. You, that was something I actually enjoyed doing, was getting the signatures. Because just talking to the folks, uh, most people don't even know how your local government even works. So it's great to be able to sit there and, and talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. So when you finish the rules, I'll go over that because it's... it's yep, it is. It is very, very interesting. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I really, that was one of the reasons that I wanted to leave Indiana because I was actually, actually an elected official like Lisa was, and so I'd have to run every four years. And I said, I want stability because it's so stressful to try and wonder, am I going to have a job? Do I need to start looking for a job? Do people yeah. like me? Do they not like me? And I said, I can't take this. They like you. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. President of the council. <laughs> okay, so um, beginning in December 1st is when I will start issuing out the documents uh, and giving it to our council. We actually have... For, and I think Lisa kind of alluded to some of this. So every every even year, we have one person at each one of the districts, and in Ripon, we have four districts. So we will have one person from each district that will be up for election. Make sense? Uh, so this year, we've got four, three, two, and one are all up. somebody that was on our council that decided they did not want to run again there is actually a non-candidacy form did you cover that I can't remember no, no, no. okay there's a non-candidacy form that you would actually need to fill out and they would need to turn it to me and I've got a deadline of that being on December 22nd because it has to be two Fridays prior to the January 2nd date this gets really weird with some of the dates and stuff, and there's no quiz, so it's okay. It's just, I have to know this, I guess. <laughs> Y'all don't have to. 
But there is an option if somebody chooses, like on the council, if they choose, somebody does not want to run, then that's what they would actually fill out and send, turn that into me. Otherwise, if they don't do it, they're obviously still going to be going, okay? All right, so. Um, Is that so it can be announced in a paper or something? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. That would be the yes. reason for that. Yes, yes. Okay. And also, I want to mm -hmm. let Lisa know because she's got ballots to make. So she'll want to know. Yes, ma'am. So if they don't file non-candidacy, they're going to be on the ballot if they turn in papers. Is that no, correct? They no, they are not going to be, and you know from that end. What as happens, far as what happens, if they don't file non-candidacy and they don't file nomination papers, then it gets kept open three days after that turning in up until Friday at 5 p.m. after. So that gives, I mean, it doesn't give enough time to get it to the newspaper. The filing else. clerk has to let the public know that nobody filled it and somebody else has the opportunity to get the required signatures and get them into the clerk. Nobody shows up by 5 o'clock on that Friday. It is uh, uh, no name on the ballot. And there will be a write-in. And we don't want to do that. Mm. No. no. Nope. It's, much, it's, much, it's much easier to actually have it to where somebody's running. And I, I'm not sure. I haven't heard, you know, we haven't started yet as far as talking to rumors, you know, how it starts and who's running, who's doing what. So we haven't really heard everything, but we have four spots that are going to be open. So if you're interested. Anybody? Go ahead. And the mayor's right. Yes, and the years. mayor's going in. He goes every two years. So Ted Grant is right now the mayor of Ripon, and he's up every two years. So if you're interested in being mayor of Ripon, hey, let us know. And it doesn't matter what district you're in on that one. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So on the mayor, when they fill out, and you know how she said the references, you got to get the signature. So for the mayor, he has to collect 50 to 100 valid signatures, okay? And I do check those. As Lisa said, I will have to check each and every one of those to make sure that everybody is a resident within the district. I'm gonna have a lot of homework on this to do, to try and do. So you wanna make sure you definitely get more than enough signatures so that it's covered. Because as Lisa said, and I don't wanna make the phone call to you and say you don't have enough. So it's best to try and get it. Then as far as council members, which is what uh, Dave will be getting, is 20 to 40 valid signatures. So it's not too terribly bad. Not that I don't think so. Um, the top portion of the nomination paper is one of the things you have to make sure that you fill out. Um, it's just like any petition. You don't want somebody to sign a petition if they don't know the cause of what they're signing for. So at the very top, you're going to want to make sure you fill in all of your detailed information, what seat you're running for. Everything is right there. And you want to be as open as you can, especially when you're trying to sell yourself. That's how I view it. I don't know if that's the correct terminology or not, but it's like you're kind of selling yourself your ideas and what you're going to do and what your projections are and what you want to bring to the table. So, okay. Questions? Okay. Um, trying to see where I'm at. So sorry. Turning our page. So there's lots of paperwork, and I will not go over the paperwork because I knew Lisa was bringing a lot of it, the declaration of candidacy, the non-candidacy, uh, the paperwork for finances. That's also something else that if you are running and you are spending, there are this paperwork that has to be filled out for any of the finances on there. And I do have paperwork on that. I can definitely give you because there's a lot more in depth as far as reading and understanding what the cause and how you spend money is done. But there are forms of all that too. The, uh, I'm trying to find where I'm at. So sorry. Next papers. <clears throat> so, um, all the, uh, all the elected officials, so in, and this is one of the things I've actually just learned, so bear with me on learning this, and I may rely on Lisa because she helped me to understand some of it. But we were going to actually look at having a February election with all of our local people. We have now pushed that to where we're going to have it in our April election instead of having it in our February election. 
because if we had it in February, it would be a cost that the city would have to take. We would have to pay 100% of it because it's just our local people. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, for a primary. For, for a primary, primary yes. Needed. Mm -hmm. So I talked to uh, city staff, we'll be going to the council, and we're going to try and just uh, put everything into the April election instead of doing a February election. Because there is no statewide election in right. the state this year. We do not have any justice of Supreme Court or um, uh, any any statewide. So we are kind of lucky that way. We have enough to worry about in April. And so any of us, Ripon School Board would end up with seven people running. They would have to have a primary. But otherwise, we can save those costs and... Um, get our ballots out earlier for the April election also. So I'm like this all the way around the county, but I'm sure I'll have a school or a county board race somewhere. I'm never that lucky. <laughs> but it, you know, that's where it becomes very confusing for yeah. our people too, just like on Tuesday, where people were looking for the polls open. So, and they did, you did have that for one of I, your districts um, I two did. years ago. Oh, did we really? Yeah, your one of your districts had a primary, remember? No. That was that, that was, was that was right before I started. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Anne was still yeah. here. One of your districts in the city had a primary, and people were coming all over. I forget which district number it was. So the polls had to be open for that one district. Oh wow! Yeah, that's crazy. It was. Mm -hmm. I had a small uh, small school board race. Rosendale Brandon had a small school board race, and then the city of Ripon. So I actually got out of the office and went around and saw all the polling places. But it's it's a lot of money. Elections are not cheap. No, 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 they're not. And that's our job is to uh, take care of all of this and be as fiscally minded as we possibly can. So that's one reason why uh, Rip and I spoke with the city administrator about it to see you know, what direction he wanted to take. And that's one reason we don't want to have an election because we want to be more cost effective. And so we need to just wait and group it in with some other things so that we're not spending or wasting taxpayer dollars on something like that. Okay, now Dave is going to finish oh. off. He is our, does everybody know Dave? <laughs> The no one knows. They're not from, even if they were from Ripon. <laughs> he is our president of council, so he helped to hire me. Yes. So I have to be nice to him. <laughs> <laughs> she be nice. She's, she's just nice. So, you know, listening to all this, it looks intimidating, and I, I want you to stress to people, it's not that intimidating. Cover page, five pages. There is some legalese. There's really not that much to running for a local office. Uh, your campaign budget, especially in a small town like that, it's zero. You're, you're not going to have signs. You're not going to do advertising. None of that's going to be there. Every, every one of us just goes door to door in our district. It's all we do. School board, same thing. So don't think you've got to hire a treasurer and do all this. You, it's a one person, go out there and just do it. And you're talking to all these really cool people. I mean, you go door to door, and it's Wisconsin. So, you know, of course, the first thing, that, where are you from? You know, southern accent, Louisiana. So I've been up for over 30 years. I can't kick it. I don't know. So, but... They're really nice. I, you know, they say 20 to 40 signatures, and the first day I go out, I get 40 signatures, in just a few hours. And the reason it took that long is because people just wanted to talk. So, you know, I went after work, and I don't know, I got way too many signatures because I enjoyed talking to people. I got a clipboard and found out, you know, what, what, what's the problem with rip? What do you guys want to see change? And that's just how you did it. And it's it's a very rewarding thing to do. So if anyone, if you know, if you guys or anyone you know want to run, and not a one issue candidate, you're going to embarrass yourself. Because you've got to do your homework on this, whether it's a school board, city council, whatever it is. But whatever wherever your passion is. And you want to do good for your community, I highly recommend doing this. So if anybody or if you know anyone, competition is good. 
So the more people we get to run, and it gives everybody a choice on who to vote for. So, and again, five pages. And all I do is get papers, fill them out in front of her. <laughs> is this right? Is this right? And then it's easy. There, there's just nothing to run. So you get to come out, talk to nice people, you get to meet them in their house. Everyone invited me in the house. I mean, it was, it's outside, it's cold, it's Wisconsin. So, you know, we just sat in there and talked for a little bit. I, I never had trouble with anyone signing paperwork, so if someone's intimidated by that, you're in Wisconsin, you're good. I mean, so I highly recommend anyone that wants to run, if you, there's no excuse not to. If you got a passion and you want to do good for your community, highly recommend it. Good job. <laughs> Questions? What are some of the issues that you deal with on the city council? People were worried about the parks, uh, and we've been working on that. And the other thing is roads. It, it's not so much a political office. It's all about getting your trash picked up. It's things of this nature. It's hiring staff. It's that's what we do. So it, you know, there's all the abortion or whatever else. It, none of that. That's not what we do. It, it's just a nuts and bolts helping the city run. The school board should be this. And it's not. I mean, I don't want to. So it, it's turned into something else, and that's bad. So I highly recommend people that want to educate their children run for the school board because we have too many one issue people out there, and we have educators. We have people that know what they're doing. You just got to let them do it. You know, the teachers need to teach. You know, the administrators need to administrate. You know, we have, we have, we're lucky to have Adam. He's the one that runs the city. We just kind of stand there and all and watch him do it. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a great thing. So anyone that wants to do it, that's the kind of stuff we wind up doing, though, is voting on, you know, doing a TIF district, things of that nature. I will add, though, one of the things that's really important for anybody who's interested in running into council is it's not a, uh, it's not an opinion position. If you run for your city council or really any position, you need to go in there and understand you're representing all the constituents in your district. So what I think may be outnumbered because everybody else in my district may think something else. That's what you're there to represent. So we have to remember that we're there for the constituents in our district, not our own personal agenda or our own personal opinion of things. And that's something that sometimes gets a little... Sometimes people forget that, but it's very, very important to remember that. Yes, it is. Hey, and you get you get good calls. Uh, you know, my last call was from someone because their street's too dark. So, you know, you go up to public works, hey, why are there only two lights on the street? It's a long walk. It's going to get back, find out what it is. Is it anything great? No, but if it's, you know, that's, that's why we're there. You know, it's a it's it's something that just try to make everybody's life in town a little better. Whatever you can do to help them, that, that's all you're looking to do, and to use their money wisely, because it is their money. So, and that's what we try to do. Anybody else? Well, on the county level, to add on to that though, you're representing your district when you come and serve as a county board supervisor, and that's really really important because. You know, we hear so much over in Fond du Lac, well, you, you never do anything for Ripon. You know, they we're just way over there and everything. Well, that's your representation also to make sure that it is getting over to Ripon. And yes, Fond du Lac County does do a lot for Ripon, believe it or not, but we do. But it's, you know, if you really feel that the representation isn't there, then you do need to get involved and come over to the county level and, you know, root for Ripon. And when you're a county board supervisor, you sit on one of the five standing committees. That's part of it. But basically, it's two meetings a month if you're serving on county board. You can certainly be involved in, a lot, in many others, but for the county, it's one meeting a month, the third Tuesday of the month, and then 
uh, our standing committees, and you're, you're dealing with the sheriff's department. You are dealing with um, social services and items like that happening on the county level. You're going to sit across from the district attorney. You're going to sit across from the medical examiner, uh, the elected officials. You're, you're going to be one-on-one -on -one with that. And understanding that county government on, you know, what's happening in your own city, but what about the highways coming over to your area, sitting with the highway commissioner. So it is very, very interesting. I never thought I would get into government. And um, as I even sit in our committee meetings, because as clerks, we have to take minutes for all the meetings and everything else. And there's days you just kind of sit there going, that's a hard decision they're going to make. or. Two months ago, we had a four-hour county board meeting, and the passion that was in that meeting uh, was, you know, people were, the representation was definitely out there that day of the people in that meeting, and that's what, that's what we need. And like I said, if it's not you, somebody that you know, um, because some people have been serving a lot of years. We do not have term limits in the, on the county level, and some people, it's like, okay, well, nobody took out the papers, so I guess I'm gonna do another term. <laughs> I think we're done. Right, we got oh. oh, yes, Roger. I got a, it's a little bit off, of, off subject as far as running, but um, just to verify something, uh, years ago, we did a uh, advisory referendum in Ripon for move to amend, mm -hmm. and Right now, if I'm not mistaken, the legislature has passed that there is no such thing as an advisory referendum on the local level anymore. Is that correct? I'm not aware of that. Okay. I, because I still have municipalities that still put advisory. I'm going to have one that... I mean, this is petition that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe the Common Council could, could put it on a ballot. But as a citizen, oh a yes, citizen you're right. Push. There are ways to get around that, but it's mainly yeah, it's mainly getting your councils to do it. Okay, and the other the other thing I have is the, alluded to uh, uh, the cost of elections, which I know is, is a lot. But uh, today I happened to run across Wisconsin I, and the state assembly was busy passing bill after bill mm -hmm. after bill on elections. And one of the big things was is that they didn't want to have any outside money for elections, which if that's the way that they want to do it, then they need to adequately fund the municipalities and the counties to run the elections, not just go and starve everything off and then say, well, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and you guys now, you go figure it out and, you know, may wave your magic wand and come up with money, because that's what happened. Did you hear me on the radio this morning? No, I did not. <laughs> that is exactly what I said this morning on uh, WFDL or that uh, Greg Sensen show in Fond du Lac. And he asked me that exact same question. And I know that is a bipartisan uh, decision that that referendum will be put on the April ballot okay. and everything. But I said, now the government needs to fund because every person that has the right to vote has the right to vote. And if it costs five dollars a ballot when it's all said and done, which some elections do cost, is five dollars a ballot. So when I take how much money was put into it by all the municipalities down to our wonderful election officials and everything else and all the uh, notifications. In the spring election, when I think everybody's going to come out and I get an 18% turnout, sometimes it does cost $5 a ballot. But every U.S. citizen who has the right to vote should be able to have a ballot when they get to the polling place. And it shouldn't be 745 and say, oh, we're out of ballot, sorry. That will never, ever, ever, ever happen in Fond du Lac County. It comes close sometimes because I am very conservative when it comes to that. But every citizen will have that. And yes, and where is that money going to come from? Uh, you'll be seeing it on the news. Today we were notified in, Wash I think it was Washington State, um, absentee ballots that were from Tuesday's election, and that election fentanyl was found in the envelopes. Um, remember years ago mm -hmm. when the powdery stuff? Yeah. Here it was fentanyl was found in that. Naomi and I were just talking about that. Um, our sheriff is very concerned about it. Uh, all the sheriffs in the state, I mean,
Why wouldn't they just pick like Fond du Lac and Green Lake and you know, Boris County and things like that? I've been to enough tabletops and I don't want to scare people, but this is what we, I was at a tabletop exercise today. Next week I'm going to Atlanta. Um, I was one of two county clerks picked in the state to go to Atlanta. Um, it's a one day conference on election threats and security because um, I have to do this starting now to prepare for our elections to be safe next year, for the people, for our voters to come in. I'm already working with our sheriff's department and they're working with all of our outlying areas and then passing what I can down to our election officials on the local level because in Wisconsin, obviously our election officials are done on the local level. So, so the question on that statement is, is what are you? What are the legislators? Have you have you contacted? Oh, all the time. Okay. I have speed. They're right. I can bring them right up on my phone right now. Okay. They were foolish enough to give me their cell phone numbers. <laughs> 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 I do the best I can for the people of Fond du Lac County, and I think you know around the state we yes. do the same thing. So sorry, we got this a little long with it. I get very passionate, as most of you know, I'm very passionate with elections. Very good. I run for local office a couple of times they didn't get elected. I just wanted to say that in my experience everybody was very helpful. Mm -hmm. Nobody nobody was hostile to me about about you know nobody said well why are you doing this? Every, everything everybody they even coached me on how to do this and that and the other thing. So if you're thinking of running don't feel too intimidated from that aspect because mm -hmm. The hostility comes after you're alive. Well, <laughs> I have a question. Just, oh, were you? No, I was here. Okay. I just wanted to, in terms of finding out people running for local office, for example, that in the, I don't, I live in Waukesha County, or I mean Fond du Lac County, but, well, Pond School District. And when I want to find out who's running for school board, I can't find that information anywhere. Yeah. I ended up last year actually looking up phone numbers through the white pages, calling those candidates and saying, why do you want to run for office? What are your interests? What are you bringing to this? Because I didn't just want to fill in a circle. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think it's really hard in these smaller communities to find out information about people who are running. Right. Now in Ripon, you've got a newspaper that's going to give information, right. yes. but I don't have that. No, you and don't. I don't know how to get that information. Yep, I, I struggle with it all the time and I have people call and I have people calling me names even with not being able to provide the information. I can only give you the candidate's phone number if the papers choose not to do any kind of candidate forum on them or like in Fond du Lac, Envision Greater Fond du Lac will uh, do a forum for like county board and school district. Um, for you know, that's Lac, but not right. Fond du Lac. And yeah, and that would be, you know, the, the school districts or the local municipalities may be saying we should do a forum to educate the voters. But, you know, I can't, we can't as election officials set set stuff like that up and we certainly cannot tell you anything about the candidates. No, I understand yeah. that. So what can we do as voters to kind of make more It's very difficult to get that information because it even even for town board, you know, you yeah. half the time I just don't vote because I don't know who I'm voting for. Right. I don't know what they stand for. You know, sometimes they get a Facebook page, but oh, a lot of them don't though. Yeah, no, especially if they have nobody running against them. Candidates just simply don't. But yep, you did the right thing, calling the candidate and asking them. That's the best you can do. Unfortunately, a lot of work on your end. But so, is there anybody that somebody like me can complain to? I know it's not you <laughs> to say. You know, how do you how who's supposed to how do we get that information? This it's not something. required by statute it's or not. by law. Okay. Yeah. That's where the local newspapers are so important. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. And we're losing them every day. Right. Yeah. And which is why we're getting so much more misinformation out there. Yeah. So the more you can support your local newspapers, the better off. And Google doesn't know everything. Just right. say it. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. No, Google does not know yeah. Thank you guys. So that's it. That's the end of the